Good evening, Oakland and beyond. Hope everybody is doing great out there wherever you may be uh, tuning in from on this Friday night in the Deep East, of course, for yours truly. We'll be hosting this edition of the show solo as, of course, the main man, the boss man, has some uh, high school football action he's watching as his uh, stepson is, of course, playing in some game action over in Alameda tonight. Uh, so it'll be just be the corporal coming at you for this playoff edition of your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland athletics. Let's go ahead and get show number 323, the playoff editions of A's fan radio underway. Again, hope everybody's doing well out there tonight. It is the legally 5150 corporal Oak town who again will be hosting this edition of the show solo come at you. Of course, as always from dub six studios located in the East Mont Hills of Oakland, California. Apologies for the, uh, last minute cancellation of or not cancellation i should say but postponement of this broadcast uh last night as of course the show was originally supposed to air at exactly this time 24 hours ago uh over here on our twitch channel uh things as far as our dinner plans ended up taking a little bit longer than they uh we anticipated on going last night um and got here literally right prior to when we would have been starting things here with the show and just the reality is Yours truly did not want to do the broadcast on an empty stomach. It just, you know, would have been very annoying. I would have been very cranky, moody, and didn't want to put you all through that. So that's part of the reason why we ended up moving things to uh, tonight as far as things go with this broadcast. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this uh, playoff edition of AFR underway. A uh, quick couple uh, heads up as far as things is what to expect on uh, this edition of the show tonight. We actually will have the uh, more traditional six-segment show coming at you this evening. Uh, we, of course, cut a segment out of last week's broadcast with only having the wild card round and a couple early divisional round games uh, to recap on the broadcast. Uh, full normal three-segment first half, three-segment uh, second half on uh, tonight's edition of the show. First half of the show, of course, will focus on uh, what happened with the remainder of those divisional series <clears throat> matchups that went down since last time we came at you. And, of course, what's happened up to uh, things tonight in both the AL and the NL uh, championship series and what's on tap for those over the course of the uh, next couple of days or so. Uh, also, of course, in the second half, we'll touch in on the latest with Cal football, the Oakland Roots, and the San Jose Sharks. And, uh, as always, we'll periodically throughout the course of the evening remind you all uh, that there will, of course, be a fan question of the night out there for the, this uh, edition of the show. It's been out since basically yesterday afternoon around 12 o'clock, and the reminder will be uh, going out here in a little bit. So uh, definitely keep your eyes open for that on either our Facebook page or our Twitter page, facebook.com slash A's Fan Radio or at A's underscore fan underscore radio over on Twitter. And be sure to get those responses in, and I, of course, will read all the responses from both our Facebook and our Twitter pages during the final segment of tonight's show. So that's what we got on tap to look forward to for this edition of the broadcast. And uh, let's go ahead and get things underway as we, of course, begin things here tonight with uh, checking in and, of course, recaps of the latest uh, of what's going on in the 2022 MLB postseason. As mentioned, of course, we still do have uh, divisional series games to take a look back at before we get into what's going on in the championship series. Uh, we'll go ahead and begin again this segment with what's going down or what went down, I should say, in the AL divisional series matchups. Second segment, of course, will focus on what went down, <coughs> excuse me, what went down in the NLDS. And then the third segment before we take our midway break of the night of course we'll focus on what's been happening and what to uh, look forward to with the championship series in both the AL and the NL so first things first though of course a look back at what happened in ALDS action since last time we came at you uh, two series of course from that to cover uh, one game in one series and basically the whole remaining four of the five games from the other one. The first series, of course, we will uh, touch basis on in uh, tonight's edition of the show on the ALDS side of things, of course, was the Game 3 matchup between the uh, AL West Division winner Houston Astros and, of course, uh, the wild card Seattle Mariners. Um, when we, of course, last left you, that was a series that the Astros were leading two games to zero after, of course, playing the first two games of that best of five set down at Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas. That, of course, meant that uh, game three would, of course, shift over to T-Mobile Park in Seattle, Washington. Um, 
whole bunch of Mariner fans, of course, turning up and filling the ballpark for that Game 3. First time in over 21 years since Seattle Mariners have had a home playoff game. Uh, of course, the last time they went prior to making it as a wild card team this year was, of course, when they won the division in 2001. And, oh, by the way, they won 116 games in that 2001 season, uh, only to ultimately get bounced in the first round of the playoffs uh, that year. And obviously, back up against the wall situation, uh, as we all remember, they looked like that they were going to come out on top and take the first game of this series before the Astros came storming back to uh, ultimately uh, defeat them in regards to that. And then, of course, uh, Houston taking the second game of that series as well down at Minute Maid Park. Uh, Here's basically how things would play out in the third game of this best-of-five series between the Houston Astros and the Seattle Mariners up in the 206. Well... Very hard-fought game between these two glove, uh, two clubs. I don't know why I said gloves there for a second. Or glo- yeah, I think I said gloves instead of clubs, but should have been clubs. Um, medical research, I guess. Kicking it a little bit earlier than planned on this edition of the show. Um, pretty much when this contest was all said and done, the Astros and the Mariners basically played what would have been the equivalent of not one, but two full baseball games in this one as ultimately when the nine regulation innings came to an end you had a nothing nothing tie which obviously of course forced extra innings to go down and pretty much even when it went into extras nobody wanted to seem to uh score jack diddley squat as this one went down so you basically went on you know went into the the 10th the 11th da da da, da so far on 15th da, 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 you know 18 innings is what this game ultimately ended up coming down to. And uh, ultimately, only one run would be scored by either team in this contest to ultimately win it. And uh, spoiler alert, unfortunately, it was not the Mariners that would score the uh, one run that would be needed to win this one in case you missed out on this action. If you were just not paying attention, hiding under a rock, off doing something, whatever. Uh, unfortunately, the Astros would score the one lone run. You know, obviously, being an A's fan, not a big fan of them, but, uh, you know, of course, you know, there are a few Astros fans that do tune into this podcast, so they're sitting there like, screw you with your unfortunate remarks, Corporal Oaktown. But, you know, yeah, shout out, of course, to uh, all the fans from all the other teams around Major League Baseball that, you know, do check in and follow uh, this podcast. We appreciate y'all tuning in. You know, even though the A's may not be your team, maybe they're um, a second favorite or another favorite that you have out there. You just like to hear baseball talk. Either way, we appreciate those of you out there that are an A's fans that tune into all this. So, yeah, when it was all said and done, after 18 innings, the Houston Astros would win game three of the series by the final of one to nothing and, of course, ultimately sweep the Mariners out of the ALDS, excuse me, the ALDS winning the series three games to none. Garcia picking up the win for the Astros in this one. Murphy, uh, Murphy, excuse me, taking the loss for the Mariners in this contest. The lone home run coming off of a home run by Pena of the Astros. Uh, again, that was basically the difference maker. That was all that was needed uh, in this one. Obviously, not the outcome that uh, probably a lot of us out there, unless you are a Houston Astros fan or for some weird, ungodly reason, if you're not an Astros fan and you're pulling for them, you know, don't know what to tell you at this point. Uh, basically, outside of if you're pulling for them or obviously you are a, a fan of them, just, you know, very unfortunate to see that very quick ending to a playoff season or series, you know, yeah, play, postseason run. Uh, for Seattle again first time in 21 years they go on one they ultimately swept Toronto in the wild card series and then ultimately basically get a sweep uh, sent right back in their faces uh, when it was all said and done um, except you know and this was kind of one of the reasons why I you know wish that you know dinner would have gotten here delivered earlier than it was last night because it would have been nice to have heard boss's take on this and uh pretty much like boss um as long as they continue to make certain moves up there and don't do anything to break up what they got going up there um do not be shocked if the seattle mariner team does stick around for a while and uh does make some runs it's definitely a team you got to keep your eyes on and uh i would be worried about 
uh, going into the 2023 season. So good run for Seattle, made it into the ALDS, but unfortunately when it was all said and done, they would be bounced from the postseason by the Houston Astros. The Astros would be the first of the AL teams to move on over into the ALCS. They would have to, of course, uh, sit around and wait for the outcome of who would uh, ultimately win the other ALDS series is, of course, that was a matchup that featured the AL wildcard uh, Cleveland Guardians facing off against the AL East division champion New York Yankees. When we, of course, uh, last joined you on the show, they only had one game played at that point in that series. They were supposed to have had game two uh near wrapped up or almost wrapped up when we came at you for the last edition of the show. But uh, inclement weather ultimately ended up interfering with that and of course the second game of that series which was supposed to go down last Thursday would ultimately get delayed until uh, give me a second here as I just obviously yet again got to wait on uh, good old MLB.com to uh, load the box scores on that Uh, game two of course as mentioned as we wait on that of that uh, excuse me best of five series between Cleveland and New York uh, ultimately, of course, again, game two was supposed to go down lat- that last Thursday, but due to weather in the area, I guess they thought it was going to rain. I think it might have rained. Don't ultimately know for sure if it did. Uh, ultimately, uh, game two getting postponed to Friday, October the 14th. And, uh, of course, obviously that would mean that uh, <laughs> ultimately it would lead to the only series in this uh, ALDS uh, for the ALD the AL side of things. We'll have to ultimately wait and see if uh, the NL side of things had that as well or not. The uh, series, of course, uh, going ultimately the full five games uh, before it would be all said and done. And uh, let's see how it ultimately led to that final outcome after it went the full five games with what went down in game two of this series is, of course, game two between Cleveland and New York coming at y'all from the Bronx last Friday at the new Yankee Stadium. Again, a game that was supposed to be played last Thursday, but again, because of weather, was moved to last Friday. Cleveland would ultimately, um, let's see here if I'm looking on things, um, hmm, would, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I think ultimately, uh, yeah, because they got, uh, this was a game that went extra innings as well, in case y'all are wondering. So if I'm reading things here correctly, since it's only listing things from the second inning on, the Yankees would have scored first in this contest as they would get two runs in the bottom of the first inning and uh, not really do anything much the rest of the way out. Cleveland would slowly pick away at that lead, uh, cutting the lead to one run with a single run in the top of the fourth and then tying the game up with a single run in the top of the fifth. Neither team would do anything in the ninth inning, so it would be on to extra frames in this one, and it would only take one extra frame, unlike that game three between Houston and Seattle, as uh, Cleveland would score two runs in the top half of that 10th inning. The Yankees wouldn't do anything in that bottom half of the 10th inning as uh, Cleveland would even up this series at one game apiece, uh, defeating New York in game two by the final of four to two. Uh, Cleveland, four runs, nine hits, no errors. New York, two runs, six hits, two errors in that contest. I think I forgot to do the uh, breakdown like that with the uh, the last series. So my bad on that. Let me make sure I get that underway. Uh, Clay's getting the win for uh, Cleveland this one, uh, while Talon took the loss for the Yankees in that game two contest. Home runs in this one, the only one being hit by either team was uh, one that was hit by Rosario of the Guardians in this one. Uh, so after, of course, that rain delay, series even up at uh, one game apiece. No off day by the way, ultimately, with this uh, series, of course, uh, as they would end up playing the next uh, three games, uh, including the game that we just recapped, in a row. Obviously, had things happened the way they were supposed to, that Friday would have been used as a travel day for the teams to go back to Cleveland. Instead, back-to-back games throughout the entire course of the weekend. Let's go ahead and see how things would play out. Ultimately, when it be all said and done, in Game 3 of this series between the Yankees and the Guardians, as, of course, the venue would move to, uh, I think it's Progressive Field now. I still prefer to, obviously, you know, refer to it as the Jake, a.k.a. Jacobs Field, over there in Cleveland, Ohio. 
Cleveland would get the first run of the game across in Game 3 of the series when they would score one run in the bottom of the first inning and then add on to that lead with a single run in the bottom of the second inning. That 2 nothing lead, though, would uh, diminish in the top of the third as the Yankees would tie it up at 2 with a two-run spot in the top of the third inning. The Yankees would then take the lead with two runs in the top of the fifth uh, to see ultimately, of course, the uh, Guardians cut within uh, a run with a single run in the top of the sixth. The Yankees would add on a single run in the top of the seventh and go into the ninth inning with the lead. Uh, They should have scored some insurance runs in the top of the ninth because ultimately as a result of not doing that, Cleveland would score three runs in the bottom of the ninth and walk off on the Yankees to take a 2-1 series lead in this ALDS matchup, winning game three by the final of 6-5. Cleveland, six runs, 15 hits, no errors. New York, five runs, five hits, no errors in this one. Morgan picking up the win for the Guardians. Schmidt taking the loss for the Yankees in this one. Home runs in the contest on the Yankees side. You had Judge go deep, Cabrera hit one, and... Uh, uh, Bader also going deep for the second time in the postseason as well. Uh, no home runs hit by the Guardians in this contest, but ultimately when it was all said and done, Cleveland uh, jumps out to the 2-1 series lead in this series. That, of course, would mean that they would go to Game 4 of the series. This one also, of course, taking place at Jacobs Field in Cleveland. Would uh, the Guardians be able to uh, clinch a series victory with this one or would the Yankees force a fifth and decisive game uh, and get out of Cleveland tying the series up with a victory in this one let's go ahead and find out what went down in game four of this series between the Yankees and the Guardians as I of course yet again went on MLB.com to load. Uh, New York would uh, score first in this one and and jump out to the early lead in game four with one run in the top of the first and then adding on two runs in the top of the second before Cleveland would finally get on the board with one run in the bottom of the third and then come within a run with a single run in the bottom of the fourth. Unfortunately for them, they would not be able to score anything else from the fifth inning on. The Yankees would add on an insurance run in the top of the sixth as they would, of course, take the fourth game of this series and force a game five in this ALDS matchup, winning by the final of 4-2. to two. New York, four runs, six hits, one error. Cleveland, two runs, six hits, one error in this one. Garrett Cole picking up the win for the Yankees. Uh, Quantrell taking the loss for the Guardians. And Peralta picking up the save for the Bronx Bombers when this one was all said and done. Harrison Bader hitting another home run for the Yankees, the lone homer for the Yankees, and this one is third of the postseason, while you had uh, Naylor hitting the lone homer for the Guardians in this one. So, hey, Game 5 being forced, back to New York they go. A game, of course, that uh, was supposed to go down on Monday, October the 17th, but for the second time during this series, weather would interfere again as Mother Nature would yet again postpone a matchup in this series, forcing, of course, Game 5 to go down ultimately on Tuesday, October the 18th, which, of course, means that the winner of this game would not have a day off before having to do battle with the Astros and the ALCS. You get to party and celebrate your victory, and then, hey, jump your ass on a plane and fly to Houston and get ready to play game one of the ALCS the next day. Would it be Cleveland that would move on, or would it be New York that would move on? Let's find out right here, right now, in case you missed out on what went down in the fifth and final game of this best-of-five series in the ALDS between the Cleveland Guardians and the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. New York would get on the board first in Game 5 with a three-run spot in the bottom of the first and then add on to that with a single run in the bottom of the second before Cleveland would finally get on the board with one run in the top of the third. Unfortunately for the Guardians, they wouldn't score anything else the rest of the way out as the Yankees would hold them to goose eggs from the fourth inning on. The Yankees would score one final run in the bottom half of the fifth inning as they win this contest and, of course, win the series as well, winning Game 5 by the final of 5-1. to one and, of course, winning the series three games to two. New York, five runs, six hits, no errors. Cleveland, one run, eight hits, no errors when game five was all said and done. Nestor Cortez picking up the win for New York. Uh, Savelle picking up the loss for the Guardians in this one. Home runs in the contest. You had none for the Yankee, uh, excuse me, none for the Guardians in this one. Uh, you had uh, the usual suspects each in a bomb in this one. Is of course, hey, 
or you shouldn't be shocked by it. It's actually shocking that it hasn't happened more at this point thus far for them. Both Stanton and Judge going deep for the Yankees in this one. So Cliff Battle, you know, decent job and performance, and shout out to how far Cleveland made it. But ultimately, uh, when it was all said and done, yeah, shouldn't be shocked that uh, the unfortunate evil empire Bronx Bombers moving on to the ALCS to do battle with the Houston Astros. And, of course, we will take a look at what has gone on so far with that ALCS matchup and what's uh, ahead in that series with Houston and New York during the uh, final segment of the first half of tonight's broadcast. Before we take our first break of the night here on show number 323 of Ace Fan Radio, just a quick reminder and the first reminder of the night that there is a fan question of the night sitting out there for y'all to chime into. It's, in fact, been sitting out there since yesterday, since this show was supposed to happen yesterday. So if you haven't had a chance to do so, make your way over to either Facebook.com slash A's Fan Radio or at A's underscore fan underscore radio over on Twitter to submit your responses to the fan question of the night of this show. Uh, just look for the poster tweet that has a fan question of the night written in it. Follow the directions. Submit your responses. I'll read them on air at the end of tonight's show. The fan question, of the course, for show number 323 is we want to hear from y'all. Who do you think will be the two teams that will move on to the 2022 MLB World Series? Again, to get those answers in, or those responses in, I should say, head over to either Facebook.com slash A's Fan Radio or at A's underscore fan underscore radio and look for the post or tweet that has fan question of the night in it. We come back, we will recap what went down in the NLDS series here on show number 323, the playoff editions of A's Fan Radio. Everybody, it's your favorite towel tally, and you're of course listening to Playoff Talk on your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland Athletics Ace Fan Radio. And remember, don't forget to bring a towel and don't forget to bring that medical research. Now fire that shit up, and of course, enjoy the rest of AFR. <coughs> towel. Yep. Tally finally got his annoying little butt back into the studio. Don't know how. Must have slipped in through a doorway somehow without uh, the missus being able to stop him. Uh, but, hey, whatever. Just make sure that little bloody piece of fabric doesn't smoke up all the uh, medical research we got on there. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is, of course, your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland Athletics. A's talk from the fans' point of view since 2003. It is show number 323, the playoff editions of A's Fan Radio, where, of course, even though our beloved Green and Gold uh, did not qualify for the MLB uh, postseason this year, we decided nonetheless to, hey, go ahead and do postseason editions of A's Fan Radio and uh, just recap what did go down or what has been going down up to this point in time uh, from of course the start of the postseason with the wild card round all the way through what ultimately uh, goes down and how things end with the uh, 2022 World Series. Uh, once again Legally 5150 Corporal Oaktown coming at you solo for this edition of the show as of course uh, a broadcast was originally supposed to take place last night ended up getting uh, rescheduled as of course uh, our delivery with our dinner ended up getting here way later than planned and hey i'm sorry i didn't want to do a broadcast on an empty stump stomach and be a grumpy shit and piss you all off because i was pissed off last night so yeah that's why we ended up not doing the show last night and that's why we're doing things here tonight and obviously with his uh, stepson having a football game tonight that's why boss man is unable to join us and uh, y'all are just stuck with me for the, uh, this duration of the show so let's go ahead and uh, continue on down the road here with things in the first half of tonight's broadcast as of course uh, we'll be spending the entire first half of the show as i mentioned uh, talking about the playoffs uh, 
up, up to this point in time. Uh, before we get into seeing how things went down on the NLDS uh, side of things, I uh, do want to mention, of course, some of you probably saw the post about it uh, out there earlier in the day, but uh, earlier this afternoon, of course, myself and the boss man wrapping up an interview with uh, Kevin Jenkins, who, of course, is running for the uh, District 6 seat on the Oakland City Council. Uh, the election, of course, is just a little under around over two weeks away from now. Uh, recorded that interview today, an interview that we uh, had been meaning to actually set up for a while. Definitely glad that it took place finally. And uh, definitely a great uh, interview with a lot of uh, great points and interesting uh, tidbits that were hit up on. So uh, definitely be sure to uh, check that out. We'll be uh, airing that on uh, next week's edition of the show, which of course will be airing on Thursday, October the 27th. So uh, again, thank you to uh, Kevin for taking part in that and uh, definitely looking forward to having you all uh, tune into that uh, interview with Kevin Jenkins when we drop it on uh, show number 324 next week. Now, on that note, let's go ahead and continue on with uh, postseason recap talk action here on the show as, of course, we now move from the ALDS side of things over to uh, how things over with the NLDS uh, ultimately ended up playing out uh, since the last time we came at you here on the show. Uh, two series, of course, to, uh, to uh, look over with this one. And uh, one of those series, just like with how things played out on the AL side of things, uh, only had one game played uh, between last week and coming at you, of course, here tonight. Uh, and because, of course, uh, that series that will lead off things here on the recaps of the NLDS uh, portion of things on tonight's show is, of course, the uh, series that took place between the defending World Series champion and it 2022 NL East uh, division winning Atlanta Braves. They, of course, took on the Philadelphia Phillies, who were one of the three NL wildcard teams to make it in to the postseason in this one. And, uh, ooh, actually, I'm in correct on this one my bad uh four games it took on this one i only thought it was three games because of uh the way i had things set up on here but uh i was incorrect about uh that one um actually hold on here i think i might have actually opened up the box score for the wrong game in this contest because yeah we already recapped game one and two the last time we came at you. So, yeah, for some reason, I clicked on the first game of the series. Don't know why I did that. My bad, y'all. Screwing up already here in the second segment of tonight's show. Uh, of course, uh, when we last joined you, uh, this series was tied up at a game apiece as Philly took uh, game one of the series on October the 11th uh, by the final of 7-6 to six, uh, and game three, uh, two uh, being taken and uh, ultimately a victory for the Braves on Wednesday, October the 12th. They won that contest by the final of 3 to nothing. the first two games of that series, of course, taking place in Atlanta at Truist Park, meaning, of course, that the next two games of this contest would shift over to the city of brotherly love as Game 3 would, of course, begin over there at uh, Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Another team, by the way, who uh, hasn't had postseason action in their home ballpark in uh, over a decade plus, 11 years, in fact, uh, since the last time the uh, Phillies made the trip to the postseason. Here is what, of course, would go down in Game 3 of that series between the Phillies and the Braves in the city of brotherly love on Friday, October the 14th. Just want to make sure I had the right date there. <laughs> the Phillies would score the first runs of this game as at the uh, bottom of the third, uh, they would drop a six-run spot on Atlanta in that contest. Um, Atlanta would finally uh, basically get their first run of the contest across in the top of the six. It would be their only run as they'd be held through goose eggs the rest of the way out. The Phillies, just for the hell of it, would add on uh, three quote-unquote insurance runs in the bottom of the seventh as uh, when this one was all said and done, Philadelphia taking game three of the series to advance to a 2-1 series advantage, uh, winning this one over Atlanta by the final of 9-1. to one. Philadelphia, nine runs, eight hits, two errors. Atlanta, one run, six hits, one error in this one. Austin Nola picking up the win for the Phillies. Strider taking the loss for the Braves in this one. Home runs in this contest, nobody hitting any ding-dong doodles on the Atlanta side. All the home runs in this one coming on the Philly side of things as Hoskins hit a home run. And, of course, uh, an individual that had been waiting uh, basically a minute since he signed that 13-year contract uh, with the Phillies. want to say he's in his 
third year now. Uh, Bryce Harper finally getting to showcase things uh, for the Philadelphia Phillies and do damage in the postseason as he also went deep in uh, Game 3 of this contest. So that means, of course, you have the defending world champs on the ropes and staring elimination in the face. Would Philly ultimately knock out last year's World Series champions and move on to the NLCS? Or would the defending world champs somehow, some way, figure out and find a way to force a Game 5 and take this series back to the ATL? Let's go ahead and take a look right now and see who this Game 4 in this NLDS matchup would ultimately go to when those nine innings were done and over with. Game four of the series, of course, being played at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The contest, of course, going down last Saturday, October the 15th. Philly would uh, get on the board first in this contest. Uh, Double checking the date. Yep, Saturday, October the 15th. Philly would get on the board first with a three run spot in the bottom of the second inning before the uh, Atlanta Braves would uh, get within one run with a single run in the top of the third. Uh, the Phillies would basically snatch that run back with a single run of their own in the bottom of the third inning. Atlanta would answer back with a single run in the top of the fourth. Uh, they wouldn't score again until the top of the seventh inning and in between that one run in the fourth. And when the eight uh, Braves did score again in the top of the seventh, the Phillies would have a three-run spot in the bottom of the sixth. When the Braves were finally able to get on the board again in that top half of the seventh inning, they would only manage one run and would not be able to score anything else the rest of the way out. The Phillies would score what would be their final run of the contest in the bottom of the eighth as they would win this one and, of course, take the series three games to one, bouncing the defending world champs from last year out of the postseason bracket as Philadelphia wins game four by the final of 8 to 3. Philadelphia 8 runs, 13 hits, no errors. Atlanta 3 runs, 4 hits, no errors in this one. Hand picking up the win for Philadelphia, Morton taking the loss for Atlanta in that one. Home runs in this one, you did have some Braves uh, go deep as uh Arcia hit a home run. Former Oakland Athletic Matt Olson hitting a home run as well and uh Darno uh Dar Arenado or uh, I think so Darno uh, probably mispronouncing it in the hell out of his name. Y'all know who I'm talking about. He hit one as well. Over on the Philly side of things, though, you had Marsh hit one. Real Muto hit one. Harper hit another one, of course, as well as he goes deep in back-to-back -back contests in this one. Uh, and you do ultimately kind of feel bad for the defending world champs uh, because just because of the fact that they have a core that as long as that core is kept together is uh, got the potential to keep that Atlanta team in postseason runs kind of similar to what we saw that squad go on you know in the late 90s and to some extent into the 2000s now ultimately will those result in some more championship runs that's ultimately for their higher ups and their upper brass to figure out to, you know just kind of you know feel bad for Matt Olson finally you know as much as I would love to still have him here he got traded bit to uh his hometown team that he grew up rooting for having a chance to do that you kind of you know can't hate on a guy but it's a little envious sometimes to do that uh but again he's on a team that uh bearing injuries or some sort of craziness and breakdown of chemistry there he's on a squad that pretty much right now has itself set up to be a perennial playoff contender uh, for the next several years to come. And, you know, can't get mad about the Phillies winning this either. Again, there are a lot of folks that we know out there that are A's fans that are actually pulling for Philly to go as far in this postseason as they can, given, you know, the A's old ties uh, to Philadelphia. So, you know, can't hate on them for that. And, you know, nice to see the city of brotherly love get to have at least one more round of uh, playoff action go down for them as they of course would sit back and await to find out who they would be facing off with in the NLCS as of course they had to wait for the other NLDS series to match up which of course featured the uh, NL West division champion Los Angeles Dodgers who of course had the uh, best record overall in all of baseball this year taking on a division rival in the form of uh, one of the wild card teams in the a uh, excuse me in the San Diego Padres when we uh, last checked in with you on this series it was a series that was also uh, knotted up at a game of peace as the Dodgers took uh, game one of the series on Tuesday October the 11th 
by the final of 5-3. to three. San Diego would take Game 2 of that series on Wednesday, October the 12th by the final of 5-3. to three. And, of course, after those first two games in L.A. at Dodger Stadium, that would see the NLDS action between these two teams move over to Petco Park in San Diego. So let's go ahead and take a look now and see how things played out in this one as uh, we take a look back at what went down in Game 3 of this series between the Padres and the Dodgers, not too far uh, from the gas lamp, which, by the way, uh, you ever have a chance to go down there, even if it's for a Padres game, you just happen to be in the area for whatever, go check out the gas lamp, man. It's uh, Nice little spot. Got a lot of good places to hit up for food, drink, all that stuff. Uh, preview, by the way, of what we could see over here with Howard Terminal. That you know, I actually put was the one that tweeted that out the other day. You want to preview what baseball, a uh, playoff baseball, could look like at Howard Terminal? This was a series that y- y'all should have been watching and paying attention to uh, because that is kind of a preview of what the uh, future could look like here in Oakland. Here's what, what played out in uh, Game 3 of this best-of-five series between the Dodgers and the Padres in San Diego. Dodgers would get on the board first in this one with the first run of the game coming in the form of a single run in the bottom of the first inning. They would add on to that lead with a single run in the bottom of the fourth before the Dodgers would finally cut that 2 nothing lead in half with a single run in the top of the fifth. L.A. couldn't get anything else on the board the rest of the way out. Uh, Duh. The Padres didn't get anything the rest of the way out either after they scored that run in the bottom of the fourth. But uh, since they basically held the Dodgers scoreless after scoring that run in the top of the fifth, they really didn't need to put anything else on there as uh, the Padres take game three of this series by the final of 2-1 to one and, of course, take the 2-1 series advantage in this one. San Diego, two runs, seven hits, no errors. Los Angeles, one run, six hits, no errors in this contest. Blake Snell picking up the win for the Padres. Uh, Gus Salon taking the loss for the Dodgers. And Hayter picking up the save for SD in this one. No homers for the Dodgers in this one, which is a little bit of a shocker. Uh, Grissom hit the only home run for the Padres in that Game 3 contest. So again, similar situation uh, where you're about to see a team that was expected to make a deep run into this postseason uh, potentially get dipped and knocked out and basically seeing a San Diego Padre team that's basically turning into David. They already knocked out the uh, 100-plus win New York Mets uh, in the wild card round of the playoffs. Are they really about to sit here and for the second round knock off yet another 100-plus win team and continue to run into the postseason? Or will the Dodgers finally be able to force a game five and go back to L.A. to try to have a final say in the matter? Here's what went down in game four of this series in San Diego between the Dodgers and the Padres. Game four, of course, being played on Saturday, October the 15th. As, of course, yet again, I went for MLB.com to switch back over to the uh, the box score portion of uh, things here. So stand by to stand by on this one. I, I always love this, you know, again, Maybe I need to invest in a gaming computer so this stuff moves <laughs> a little bit faster on uh, on my end. Um, waiting, waiting, still waiting. Ah, what the hell? Ah, there we go. Just when I was about ready to say screw it and move on, then you want to finally load it. Anyway, here's what went down in game four. The Dodgers would actually take the first lead of this contest with two runs in the top of the third inning. They wouldn't put up anything else on the board until the top of the seventh inning when they would score a single run in the top of that seventh inning. Uh, But then everything would come unwinding for them in the bottom half of that inning, which was bad news for them, but outstanding news for the Friars in this one as San Diego would take the lead in the bottom of the seventh inning, scoring all five of their runs in this game in that seventh inning. They held the Dodgers scoreless for the final two frames of this one as the Dodgers win game four of this series by the final of five to three, win the series by the final of three to one, and for the second time in this year's postseason, bounce a 100-plus win team from the bracket. San Diego, five runs, nine hits, no errors. Los Angeles, three runs, seven hits, no errors in game four. Hill picking up the win for San Diego. Almonte taking the loss for L.A. And Hayter picking up the win for 
the Friars in this one. Checking on things on the rest of the box score. Home runs in this contest. You had no home runs by L.A. yet again for the second game in a row in this one. And, uh, hey, nobody hit a home run for San Diego in this contest either. The Padres moving on to the NLCS. Uh, First time that they've been in the NLCS, by the way, since uh, 1998. That was the last time they went when, of course, they would ultimately go on to uh, the 98 World Series and ultimately lose to the New York Yankees that year. Uh, The Dodgers, yet again, uh, for some weird reason, you know, a team that's been to the playoffs multiple years in a row, but outside of winning that uh, World Series during the 2020 shortened COVID season, uh, they get bounced yet again just short of a world championship goal. So uh, just, again, just crazy that uh, the Padres are basically like a baseball version of David, and they've knocked out not just one, but two Goliaths at this point. Uh, Just crazy, man. Two 100-plus win teams, gone in two rounds. Defending world champs, gone as well. So definitely interesting setup. It's, of course, the Padres moving on to take on the Phillies in the NL. The, uh, the NLCS. And of course, uh, we will be next taking a look at uh, what has gone on so far in the AL and NL Championship Series and what's ahead with those as well. But before we get to that, before, of course, we get into our uh, next break of the night here on show number 323 of Ace Fan Radio, quick reminder yet again that there is a fan question of the night sitting out there for y'all to partake in and submit a response to. So if you haven't had a chance to do so yet, make your way over to either Facebook.com slash A's Fan Radio or at A's underscore fan underscore radio over on Twitter. Look for the poster tweets that say fan question of the night. Follow the directions on there. Submit your responses. And I, of course, will read off all of those responses at the end of tonight's show. Fan question of the night for this one is we, of course, want to hear your thoughts on who will be facing off in the 2022 MLB World Series. We come back, recap of what's gone on so far in the championship series and what's left ahead for both the AL and NL championship series. We come right back here at you on show number 323, the playoff editions of A's Fan Radio. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we, of course, get ready to head into the final segment of the first half of tonight's broadcast. Of course, yeah, you already know there's still an infamous X-rated uh, second half still lingering out there in the wings to come your way here in a bit. Before, of course, we get to that, we still got to, of course, take a look at how things have gone down so far with the championship series uh, round of matchups and uh, what's still on tap to come with that before, of course, the uh, World Series gets ready to uh, go down and take shape. Welcome back to show number 323, the playoff editions of your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland Athletics A's fan radio, where, yes, even though the A's aren't in the postseason, we still decided to uh, take a look and follow what went down with the postseason here in 2022 because, hey, playoff baseball is the best postseason in all of professional sports, uh, regardless if you agree with me or disagree with me. And if you don't agree with me, sorry, not sorry on that one. Legally 5150, Corporal Oaktown uh, hosting this edition of the show solo as a of course, the main man, the boss man, uh, having the night off with his stepson playing in a high school football game over in Alameda. And that, of course, was the result of us uh, having to postpone uh, this broadcast from when it was originally supposed to go down last night because uh, dinner arrived here hella late at the studio and just didn't want to do the broadcast on an empty stomach. But, hey, we're coming at you right here, right now. That's better than pushing the show back and having to recap two-plus weeks of postseason action, which might have me pulling out my hair at that point in time. Just didn't want to do that. So that's why I want to make sure that at the latest it only went one day so we're here at you right here right now final segment of course of the first half of tonight's broadcast takes a look at uh what's been going on so far in the championship series for the national league and of course the american league we'll take a look at the games that have happened so far and the games that are still on tap to come our way between now and the next time we come at you here 
on AFR, which, of course, the next edition of the show will be hitting you all upside the heads next Thursday night, October the 27th at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And in case you uh, missed out on it earlier, next week edition, uh, next week's edition of the show, of course, is when we'll be airing the uh, interview with Kevin Jenkins that myself and the boss man recorded earlier today. First uh, AL or first uh, championship series we're going to go ahead and take a look at, of course, is the AL side of things in the championship series, which, of course, features the matchup between the AL East champion New York Yankees and the AL West champion Houston Astros. The Astros, of course, finishing with the best overall record in the American League in 2022. So this best of seven uh, championship series, of course, begins uh, with the first two games being played at Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas. Uh, Let's go ahead and take a look at what went down in the first two games of that series. We'll, of course, begin with game one of, or wait, I'm tripping. We already went through uh, did we? Uh, uh, no, I'm tripping. This, uh, my bad. I'm getting everything confused here. Looking at the dates and stuff. This series, of course, beginning this week. My bad. Game one going down on Wednesday, October the 19th at Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas. Uh, both teams would each uh, get single runs uh, in the second inning to begin the first game of this series uh, before the Astros would take the lead with a two-run spot in the bottom of the six, and they would add on what would be their final run of the contest in the form of a single run in the bottom of the seventh. The Yankees uh, would only muster out two runs overall over the course of this entire nine-inning game, that second and final run being scored in the top of the eighth inning as uh, Houston takes the first game of this best of seven series defeating the Yankees in game one by the final of four to two Houston four runs seven hits one error New York two runs five hits no errors in this one Justin Verlander picking up the win for Houston Schmidt taking the loss for New York and uh, Presley picking up the save for the Astros when it was all said and done in game one home runs in this contest over on the Yankees side Harrison Bader uh, continuing to smack the hell out of the baseball by the way I'm not the one that tweeted out uh, the the nickname Master Bader yesterday. Y'all can blame Boss Man uh, for that one. But uh, I guess in Boss's eye, he's earned that given the fact that he's hit four postseason home runs at this point, just continues to uh, be one of the uh, few steady sticks, I guess, so far over there in the Yankee lineup. Uh, you also had Rizzo hit a ding-dong doodle for the Bronx Bombers in this one. Over on the Astro side of things, you had Gurley Yale hit one, uh, McCormick hit one as well, and the rookie Pena hitting his uh, second homer of the postseason in the this contest as well as again Houston takes the early uh, one nothing lead in the series defeating New York by the final of four to two in the first game of the series let's go ahead and see now if uh, Houston would be able to jump out to an early 2-0 series lead or if the Yankees would be able to knot things up before they uh, make their way over to the Bronx for the upcoming two games uh, or upcoming three games I should actually say in this series we'll find out of course here in a bit that's the way it used to be unless they decided to up and change that crap on me again and I just didn't notice. Uh, game two of this best of seven ALCS matchup between Houston and New York uh, also going down at Minute Maid uh, Park in Houston, Texas taking place yesterday, October the 20th, which by the way was a Thursday. <laughs> okay, wow, some random stuff loads up on my screen here randomly. Yeah, that's nothing new. Always some random thing happening here on the computer. Anyway, the Houston Astros would uh, strike first in this contest as they would score three runs to open up things in the uh, bottom of the third inning. The Yankees uh, would get within one run as they, of course, would, uh, or excuse me, yeah, they would get within one run as they would have a two-run spot in the uh, top of the uh, third inning or fourth inning in this contest. Uh, trying to obviously see what the re- what rest of the stuff happened here, but as always, I got some random thing that pop click on here so i don't know why it showed up uh trying to get it out of the way here to see ultimately uh okay second inning or top of the fourth inning by the way is when they scored those uh two runs here i'm trying to get this damn whatever the setting thing here <laughs> is out of the way Ah, oh, god i always love how technology always screws up here ace fan radio exclusive there we go finally going away Ah, uh, man, I could have just actually said that after that fourth inning, neither team getting anything. Uh, when it was all said and done, Houston would have the 2-0 series lead secure as they would beat the Yankees 
in game two by the final of three to two. Houston, three runs, eight hits, two errors. New York, two runs, four hits, no errors when game two was all said and done. Valdez picking up the win for Houston. Severino, who pitched actually pretty decently for the most part outside of those three runs that he gave up, uh, taking the loss in this one. And uh, Presley earning yet another save in this one as uh, some other random window opens up yet again on there. But, ha, able to stop it this time. Uh, No home runs for New York in this one. Bregman hit the lone homer for the uh, for the Astros in this contest, and that of course accounted for the uh, all three of the runs that uh, Houston scored in this one. So Houston again taking Game Two, three to two, and uh, taking the early two nothing uh, series advantage here in this best of seven ALCS matchup. Game action, of course, now after a off day today over on the AL side of things, we'll see the next three games of the series shift to Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Game three, of course, scheduled to go down tomorrow, Saturday, October the 22nd at, uh, look it up here, it says 5.07 p.m. That's, of course, Eastern time. There we see here, five, so just trying to do some countdown here. Basically, 2.07 p.m. our time is when game three of that series will start in New York. Game four, of course, scheduled for Sunday, October the 23rd. That will also be at Yankee Stadium as well. That, of course, will start at 4.07 p.m. uh, Pacific Standard Time. Game five, if it is necessary, would take place on Monday, October the 24th in New York, and that would be a 1.07 p.m. start time, uh, of course, for us. And then, of course, if game six is forced, uh, that game and a game seven, if needed, would, of course, head back to Houston, Texas. Game six, if needed, will be on Tuesday, October the 25th at uh, 3.07 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if somehow, some way, this series ends up having to go the entire seven games, let me just make sure for y'all make sure to switch it back over to that image as well if all seven games are needed game seven would be scheduled to go down on wednesday october the 26th in houston texas and that series of course starting at uh that game excuse me starting at 5 37 p.m pacific standard time if it is needed uh Bottom line, if uh, you're either a fan of the Yankees or if you're rooting for the Yankees uh, here in the ALCS, they need to wake the hell up because uh, if they don't, um, as much as I hate them, as much as most of y'all out there hate them, and of course the exceptions being you couple Astro fans that follow this show and tune into this show, uh, they will get bounced by the Astros if they don't wake the hell up in these next couple of games. They have the offense there that when it comes to hitting the ball out of the park, you think would put the runs up on the board. Um, Just the question is, uh, can those same individuals somehow figure out a way to maybe play some small ball if they can't hit the ball out of the park? That's going to be the big question. Bottom line, one way or another, those of you that are rooting uh, for the team that uh, initially for many, many years has been referred to as the evil empire. There's some out there that's followed this show and even some out there around the rest of baseball that think the evil empire is the Astros right now. Have to disagree with you all on that. In my eyes, the evil empire is still the New York Yankees, but I'm rooting for them over the Astros in this series. I really don't care for either team, but hey, better two evils, I guess I could say, unfortunately. Uh, my hope is somehow, some way, uh, the Yankees can pull off defeating Houston in this series, but we'll have to ultimately, I guess, wait and see what happens with that. A series, of course, right now that, again, sees Houston leading uh, two games to none with, of course, the series shifting to New York for uh, games three through five. Uh, Let's go ahead now and see how uh, things are shaping up with the NLCS side of things as we uh, recap the games that have gone on so far with that. And, of course, uh, take a look ahead at what's on tap for that series, which, of course, is uh, a matchup of wildcard teams uh, in this championship series on the NL side of things, as you, of course, have the uh, San Diego Padres, who bounced the 100-plus win Mets and also bounced a 100-plus win uh, Los Angeles Dodgers in route to their appearance in this NLCS, going up against a Philadelphia Phillies team that uh, did a decent job of, of course, making its way through the rounds as well as Philly, of course, knocked off the Cardinals in the wild card round and then, of course, uh, bounced out the defending world champion Atlanta Braves uh, three games to one in that ALDS matchup. Let's go ahead and see how things have played out so far as uh, two games are in the, or excuse me, three games are now in the books with this uh, NLCS series. We'll, of course, begin with the first of these three games that have happened so far, uh, which, of course, 
Bucks, uh, the first game of the series going down on Tuesday, October the 18th. This best of seven series, of course, opening up at Petco Park in San Diego, California. So, hey, another couple of games where it gets to be rocking and rolling over there at the gas lamp in that area around that ballpark. Again, perfect example of what we can see uh, things looking like on game days, not just during the regular season, but even the playoffs as well at Howard Terminal when it finally comes to fruition. Here's what went down in game one of this best of seven ALS, uh, NLCS matchup. Excuse me, I almost said ALCS. NLCS matchup between the Phillies and the Padres. First run of the game would come across in the top of the fourth inning, and it would be scored by the visiting Phillies uh, as they would get one run across in the top of that fourth inning. They would also score a single run in the top of the sixth, and those two runs would be all that would be needed for this one as the Phillies pitching staff holding the Padres to a bunch of zeros in the run column through the entirety of this contest as Philly takes game one of the NLCS by the final of two to nothing. Philadelphia, two runs, three hits, one error. San Diego, no runs, one hit, one error in this contest. Wheeler picking up the win for Philadelphia. Darvish taking the loss for San Diego. And uh, Alvarado picking up the save for Philadelphia in this contest. Uh, Just waiting for the box score portion of things to load on here because for some reason I didn't click on that prior to going into this. Uh, Home runs in this one, the only home runs being hit of course by the winning side in this one as uh, both of the home runs that supplied the two runs in this contest for Philadelphia were solo shots. Bryce Harper hitting his fourth overall postseason home run in this contest and Kyle Schwarber hitting his first homer of the postseason being recorded by the Lays potentially the farthest home run hit to date at at, uh, Petco Park down there is that home run that Schwarber hit uh, was estimated at traveling over 488 feet. Yeah, he had a a bomb that basically went up there in that little, the first couple rows of that little second deck structure that they got just beyond the uh, right field wall over there in right. San Diego, uh, or excuse me, Philadelphia jumping out to the early 1-0 series lead in this one. Game two, of course, uh, would also take place at Petco Park in San Diego, and it would go down the very next night, Wednesday, October the 19th. Would Philly jump out to a 2-0 series lead, kind of similar to what the uh, Astros have done so far on their end of things with the ALD uh, CS side of things? Or would the Friars be able to even this matchup up at a s- one game apiece? Let's find out what happened this past Wednesday over near the gas lamp in San Diego. Philly would get on the board first yet again in this series uh, for the second game in a row as they would have a four-run spot happen in the top half of the second inning. Uh, But then things would unravel uh, pretty much for them at that point as after that point, the Padres would go on to score seven unanswered runs uh, to ultimately take the lead. Uh, The first of those uh, seven unanswered runs coming in the form of a two-run spot in the bottom of the second inning, and then the other five of those seven unanswered runs being scored in the bottom of the uh, the fifth inning, and oh, my, my bad, excuse me, they scored also, uh, it was eight unanswered runs, pretty much, my bad, not seven unanswered runs, eight unanswered runs uh, in this one, um, as ultimately they would score their final run of the contest in the form of a single run in the bottom of the seventh. Uh, the Phillies would get one run across in the top of the eighth, uh, but it would be all for naught, as the Padres would take this second game of the series, winning it by the final of 8-5 to five, and nodding this NLCS up at one game apiece. San Diego, eight runs, 13 hits, one error. Philadelphia, five runs, eight hits, no errors. Snell picking up the win for San Diego. Nola taking the loss for Philadelphia. And Hayter picking up a save for the Padres in this one. Again, a game where initially Philadelphia went up 4 nothing, only to see San Diego score eight unanswered runs on this one, on him in this one to go on to the 8-5 victory. Home runs in this contest, the only Philly home run being hit by Hoskins as he hit his second postseason home run. San Diego side of things, you saw Drury hit one uh, hit a post uh, hit a home run. Bell hit a home run as well. Machado also going deep for the Friars in this one. So of course that would uh, move the series over back 
uh, to the city of brotherly love for, of course, the next three games of this set. That was, of course, after the teams had the travel day uh, yesterday to get out to Philadelphia. Game three of this uh, best of seven NLCS series actually wrapping up just as we were getting ready to go on the air with uh, tonight's edition of the show. So a uh, real cr- recent uh, game action being brought your way right here, right now. And here is what went down in that game three matchup of this best of seven series uh, between two wildcard teams. As of course the Padres look to see if they take the lead here in San over in Philly or if the Phillies, of course, would end up winning things when it was all said and done earlier this evening. Philadelphia would get on the board first in this Game 3 contest when they would score the first run of the game in the bottom of the first inning. San Diego would tie the game up at one run apiece when they would get on the board with a single run in the top of the fourth inning, only to see Philadelphia retake the lead with a two-run spot in the bottom of the fourth. Uh, the, uh, The Padres would get within one run in the top of the fifth, but wouldn't be able to get anything else across from the sixth inning on. The Phillies would add on one more run before this one would be all said and done scoring that final run of the contest for them in the bottom of the six when this one was all said and done philly would have the w at the end of things as they win this game by the final of four to two to take the two one series lead in the nlcs but uh, before i get to who won who lost and who got the save philadelphia four runs nine hits two errors san diego two runs seven hits no errors in this one suarez picking up the win for philadelphia musgrove taking the loss for san diego and dominguez picking up the save for the phillies in this one no home runs for san diego only home run uh for either team being hit uh by an individual who just of course the other day hit the farthest home run ever hit at petco park uh that being kyle schwarber who basically hit a home run to uh lead off the contest for the phillies uh in the bottom of the first inning. Uh, of course, again, as mentioned, that Sh- uh, Shaz Philadelphia, of course, up 2 1 so far in this best of seven series. Next two games, of course, slated to go down in Philadelphia with game four of the series taking place tomorrow, Saturday, October the 22nd, over there at Citizens Bank Park in Philly. That will be a 4.45 Pacific Standard Time start for that contest tomorrow. Game five of the series, that will also be in Philadelphia. Uh, That will be on Saturday, October the 23rd. That game will start at 11.37 a.m. our time out here on the West Coast. If games six and seven are needed, of course, the uh, game action would shift back. Uh, my bad. I forgot to move it over to that image when I just recapped that, that game in the series. So, okay, my bad. Messed up again with that. Obviously, the three games I just talked about uh, that are next on the schedule taking place in Philadelphia. If games six and seven, of course, are needed, the game action would shift back to Petco Park in San Diego. That game six, if it were needed, would be on Monday, October the 24th, with first pitch slated to be at 5.03 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and if for some reason or another Game 7 is needed in that series between Philadelphia and San Diego, it would take place on Tuesday, October the 25th at Petco Park in San Diego, and that would also be a 5:03 start in that one. Uh, 2-1 series lead again, of course, for the Phillies in this one. As I mentioned earlier, you got a lot of uh, A's fans out there, you know, some that we know and many out there that we don't know. We just happen to, you know, see what they throw out on social media that are pulling uh, for the Phillies to ultimately win this series and, of course, ultimately move on to the World Series. There's some out there that don't even want to see that happen because they're worried that if the Phillies end up winning the World Series, we can see uh, another recession end up happening. Like, that's kind of been, I guess, commonplace when some Philly baseball teams have won World Series in recent years. But uh, for all we know, a recession probably might be on the way one way or another, regardless who ends up winning the World Series. So definitely understand and can't hate on y'all out there that are uh, pulling for the Phillies to advance in this one. Uh, but uh, to rain on y'all's parade a little bit, uh, the corporal actually would like to see San Diego somehow, some way, take this NLCS. Uh, the Padres kind of became uh, an unofficial second team uh, for years truly during his four years stationed at Camp Pendleton while he was at the in the Marine Corps, even if the uh, Padres weren't really up to par during that time. But, you know, kind of got a little, you know, feeling and support for them from, you know, them being the team that was kind of closest to me for me to go and watch 
baseball action from time to time down there if I was able to make it up here for a game in Oakland or whatnot. Uh, be nice to see that happen and, you know, have that be a chance for them to, you know, actually play in a World Series for the first time since uh, 1998 when they, of course, went to the World Series that year and ultimately lost to a well more you know, rounded and dominant New York Yankees squad. But, um, you know, ultimately at the same time, you know, as badly as I want to see San Diego take this NLCS, you know, I, you know, at the same time will not be shocked if uh, the Phillies end up pulling out things. So one way or another, going to be really interesting. I think we're in for a very nice uh, matchup between uh, these two teams the rest of the way out in this one. Uh, again, though, it would be nice to see, the uh, Yankees trying to make things interesting over in uh, their series. And uh, pretty much looking here at the postseason picture as of tonight, um, that's how it stands at this point. Again, you have uh, Houston with the 2-0 lead over in the ALCS. And then, of course, you got the uh, the Phillies with the 2-1 advantage right now over on the NL side of things uh, over in the NLCS. And, uh, of course, obviously no need for us to uh, preview uh, what's to come yet with the World Series because the World Series isn't scheduled to start until the day after uh, the next edition of A's Fan Radio. So, of course, we'll uh, – discuss things in regards to that uh, on next week's edition of the show when of course we take a look back and recap uh, the games that have not happened yet in these championship series next week so when we come back at you a uh, little over six days from now we of course will be finding out who will be moving on to the 2022 fall classic and uh, of course uh, for those of you out there that might have forgotten uh, that's exactly what the fan question of the night for this edition of the show is uh, tied to so if you haven't had a chance to do so go ahead and make your way over to either facebook.com slash a's fan radio or at a's underscore fan underscore radio over on twitter and submit your responses for the fan question of the night for show number 323 just look for the poster tweet that went out earlier in the day uh, or many uh, multiple ones out there because i put out one probably around five and then was one that of course went out at 805 uh, our time when we started the show but either way look for the poster tweet that has fan question of the night in it follow the directions and i'll submit your responses submit your responses and i of course will read off all those responses during the final segment of tonight's show that fan question of course being we want to hear your thoughts on who will be squaring off in the 2022 mlb world series on that note it's seventh inning stretch time here on show number 323 of A's Fan Radio. We come back at you for the infamous X-rated second half of tonight's broadcast. We're going to go ahead and touch bases on what Cal football, the Oakland Roots, and the San Jose Sharks have been up to. And, of course, take a look at what all those teams have up to head uh, for them in their various segments that are going to be spread out over the uh, segments to end the excuse me, second half of tonight's broadcast. And, of course, also, before the night is over with, I will read off all of y'all's responses to the fan question of the night for this edition of the show. Smoke them if you got them. Fire up that medical research. Go grab a couple cold ones out of the fridge. It is seventh inning stretch time here on AFR. We'll be right back at you here in a bit for the infamous X-rated second half of show number 323, the playoff editions of your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland Athletics A's Fan Radio. Welcome back, fellow Oakland Athletics fans, wherever you're tuning in from on this beautiful Friday night in Oakland and beyond. Welcome to what we historically refer to on this broadcast as our infamous X-rated second half of the show. Uh, we always referred to it as the infamous X-rated second half because this back in the day when we first did the show from 2003 to 2007 is where we tried to save all the uh, naughty language, profanity, and all that uh, good old obscenity stuff for uh, for the point of the show. But obviously, uh, as some of y'all have witnessed and heard uh, since uh, the relaunch era began for this broadcast back in uh, 2011 when I brought the show back from a four-year hiatus, the whole bloody broadcast can be quote-unquote 
X-rated if you look at it from the profanity, obscenity, and foul language side of things. But regardless of that, this still historically is referred to as the infamous X-rated second half of your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland Athletics. A's talk from the fans' point of view since 2003 as, of course, our 2022 playoff editions of the show. That, of course, little joke is uh, in, you know, shout out, of course, and reminiscent of whenever we would uh, get close to talk about the postseason potentially on these shows. The first go around, Dobbins would use that little quote right there. So that's, of course, the always little shout out under thing to show co-founder uh, Chris Dobbins is whenever any of us mention playoffs, you look at that with that good old quote from that Colts coach, playoffs, we made everyone in another game. Da, 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 da. So yeah, shout out, of course, to one of our two show co-founders who's off doing uh, who knows what at this point in time, uh, his little lawyer gig and uh, whatnot in regards to that. Uh, on that note, uh, we're going to go ahead and begin the second half of uh, tonight's broadcast uh, with a little Cal football talk as it is, of course, time once again for a segment edition of the Bear Raid. And just like the full-on podcast version of the Bear Raid, the segment edition of the Bear Raid is, of course, brought to you by none other than the soon-to-be 99-year-old pile of dirt overlooking a soon-to-be 99-year-old college football stadium up in Strawberry Canyon in Berkeley, California. The segment and podcast versions of the Bear Raid, of course, being brought to you by Tightwad Hill. Uh, Same subject as it is pretty much uh, as the discussion when we do these uh, Bear Raid segments here at this point in time of the year. Uh, Really only kind of one program we focus on, and that's because the basketball programs haven't started up yet, and that is, of course, the uh, the Cal football program, which uh, many of us, of course, uh, when I started to follow them a lot more regularly, it was, of course, during the the time that Jeff Tedford uh, was the coach up there. Uh, in Berkeley so uh, obviously grew up watching teams that are uh, were way better and performed a hell of a lot better than some of these teams we've had as of late it basically seems like since Tedford left it's been a steaming hot pile of uh, bear shit up there in Strawberry Canyon Uh, but uh, hey hopefully things could head in a better direction Um, after of course what went down last week you're kind of sitting there uh, scratching your head and wondering as a bear fan if they are going to be able to uh, turn things around in 2022, if it's going to be another disastrous, lovable loser season uh, for Cal football. One game to recap, one game to uh, look ahead to on this uh, week's edition of the uh, Bear Raid segment as we, of course, take a look at the uh, game that played out uh, on the road last weekend for your California Golden Bears. Road matchup against a team that had yet to have even a single bloody win in uh, – FBS uh, football play in 2022 as the Bears went to Boulder, Colorado to battle it out with the uh, winless Colorado Buffalo. Uh, Neither team being able to score anything when the first uh, 15 minutes of this game were done and over with. When the first half wrapped up, uh, you had Colorado going into the half up by a score of three to nothing. So uh, kind of a little embarrassing seeing that, you know, that you're getting held scoreless in this one, and then you let a team that hasn't won a game yet at this point uh, have a field goal lead on you. But uh, given who the damn offense coordinator is for the California Golden Bears, kind of doesn't shock me on that and more on that here in a little bit uh, as far as my ranting and raving go with the, goes with that individual. Uh, Cal would take the lead with a touchdown in the third quarter. It would be the only point scored by either team in the contest. Uh, they would get six points in the fourth quarter, but Colorado would get ten points uh, in the fourth quarter to ultimately force an overtime in this one. Uh, Cal's half of the first overtime, they weren't able to do any anything. Colorado, on the other hand, was able to uh, score a touchdown in OT. And when it was all said and done, uh, your California Golden Bears taking uh, a second consecutive loss after that 49-point barrage that they unleashed on Arizona a few weeks back. Two losses in a row since that game and another game where pretty much the Cal offense was missing in action as when it was all said and done in overtime, your Colorado, uh, your California Golden Bears falling to the Colorado Buffalo 20-13 to 13 in overtime. You know, Cal didn't even put out a final score image on their social media pages. I had to take the OT image, as you can see there, and edit it myself to have 
uh, a final score up there for y'all uh, in this one. Uh, pulling up the individual scores here real quick for y'all in this one. Leading passer for Cal in that contest was Jack Plummer. He was 29 of 52 for 262 yards, one touchdown, and one pick. He was sacked two times in the contest. Colorado's leading passer was Owen McCowan, who was 13 of 21 for 104 yards, no touchdowns, and one pick. Uh, you also had uh, J.T. Strout out there for eight uh, completions on 12 attempts. He threw the only uh, passing touchdown for the Colorado QBs that partook in that contest uh, last Saturday. Leading rusher for Cal was uh, freshman Jaden Ott, though uh, kind of a not, uh, you know, as far as what he did a couple weeks ago, looking a little bit more on average, I guess you can say, 16 attempts, only gained 60 yards. He actually had 13 uh yards lost for a net of 47 uh, and he didn't score a rushing touchdown nobody in fact uh, from the running back core for Cal scoring a touchdown in this one Colorado side of things when it came to the rushing stats Deion Smith was their leading rusher 14 attempts for 52 yards uh, he didn't score a touchdown though as the only rushing touchdown for the Buffalo came from Anthony Hankerson leading receiver for Cal in this one was Marvin Anderson uh, 61 yards on six receptions no touchdown receptions though as the lone touchdown reception for the California Golden Bears was caught by Mike, uh, J. Michael Sturveyant, uh, who had six receptions for 45 yards. Uh, the lone touchdown reception being caught by their leading receiver, Montana Lamunas Craig, who had eight receptions for 119 yards and one touchdown in that contest last Saturday. Again, a contest the California Golden Bears drop to the Colorado Buffalo as they lose that contest in overtime by the final of 20 to 13. So again, not just an embarrassing loss because of the fact that it was a team that you were expected to win, but it's a team that hadn't had a win at all, man. You basically gave this team their first win overall this season. And just, you know, again, just, just when you think that after a game, Cal's taken some steps forward, two games later, they've taken a whole crap load of, uh, of steps ultimately back. And uh, again, just uh, another game or after that 49 point put out uh, two games prior at home against Arizona, whole lot of really nothing on the offensive side uh, in this one. And that was obviously the case when they lost to uh, Washington State last week. And, you know, again, I'm under trying to be understandable and, you know, get and understand the fact that uh, Plummer might be a little bit banged up. There's talk, you know, we've been waiting to see if Plummer's even going to start this week or if uh, uh, the backup, uh, Ma uh, Ma Ma Mailer, Ma Mainer, forgot exactly his name. Last name starts with an M, I know that. If he's going to end up potentially starting uh, in the contest at home, which, of course, is tomorrow night, and I'll be getting to that here in a little bit um, in a second. But just, you know, the reality is, again, uh, I also put a lot of the blame on these, not just this loss, but the loss before, and a lot of these offensive struggles the last couple of years, solely on the shoulders of, not just to Wilcox, but garbage-ass offensive coordinator Bill Musgrave, who those of you that have listened to this show since I brought it back, y'all already know Bossman and I used to dump on Musgrave all the time when he was the offensive coordinator of a uh, certain team that we no longer follow that's decided, of course, to abandon Oakland twice. And it's, 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 So, yeah, you already know we hated on Musgrave back when he was the coach of the Oakland Raiders, and that isn't going to change because the fact is you know, he's still garbage. He's just as garbage as he was in the NFL. I never understood why Cal brought him over to begin with. And uh, I'm just still sitting here waiting, as are some other fans and alumni out there, for them to honestly fire Musgrave. And I really would like to see Musgrave get the boot before the season's over with. You know, I don't care if it's Wilcox that has to make that decision. I don't care if people over Justin's head have to make that decision, man. You, you brought in your former offensive line coach to try to help out with things um, on the offensive side of the ball. I'm almost to the point where I'd rather have that guy be the offensive coordinator than garbage-ass Bill Musgrave. Um, so, yeah, Cal football, Cal athletics, for the love of God, hashtag fire Musgrave already. Kick that to the curb. Ah. <sighs> Next game for the California Golden Bears, of course, is uh, tomorrow night as they, of course, will have Pac-12 after dark action go down up there at California Memorial Stadium. And yours truly, of course, will be up there 
on, uh, on Tightwad Hill to watch the action unfold as the Washington Huskies will be coming into town for that one. Again, kickoff of that contest tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, for those of you that want to come and watch the game, of course, up on Tightwad Hill, we'll be starting the pregame uh, tailgate up at what we refer to as the uh, Tightwad Hill 50 Club uh, at approximately 4.30 p.m. So, again, pregame tailgate of the Tightwad, uh, Tightwad 50 Club will be tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with the kickoff slated to go down on this one at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Those of you that will be uh, staying at home uh, for this one, you can, of course, catch this game on ESPN and over on the radio side of things, uh, whatever the hell uh, what used to be KGO 810 has uh, turned into right now. That, of course, uh, even with the whole format change uh, to KGO, uh, Cal football looks like, at least for the remainder of uh, this season, will be staying over there on 810. Uh, we'll be really interesting to see if they stay over there on um, 810 next year or not. I uh, we'll guess we'll have to wait around to see uh, what's going on with that. And just, man, you're going to be in front of a national televised audience tonight i would love to sit here and you know say some motivational shit garbage genre to hype the troops up but uh a little hard to do that unfortunately with uh just the performance you've seen out there the last couple of days you know as somebody that just a few weeks ago when cal won that game 49 to 31 over arizona my hope and thought was that the offense might have turned things around at that point only uh, yet again have to be woken up to the fact uh, just two games later that, uh, nah, dog, that ain't going to happen, unfortunately, as long as Bill Musgraves running this offense. So uh, hopefully, hey, change my mind, prove me wrong, you know, do something better for once finally, Bill, and help contribute to getting us a win tomorrow because I I'm going to be real. They play it all like they have the last couple weeks. It is for sure going to be a loss tomorrow night. Uh, really hope that that doesn't happen, that these guys have actually – got a little bit of fire under their belly after losing to a winless team last week and actually can get a victory somehow some way on Pac-12 after dark action tomorrow but you know I'm not going to be surprised either if uh, the Huskies walk out of Strawberry Canyon with a victory uh, tomorrow night I hope not but they don't be shocked if uh, they do beat the Golden Bears tomorrow night current standings at this point in time in the Pac-12 conference are as follows uh, the ninth ranked UCLA Bruins are First in the conference with an overall record of, uh, excuse me, a conference record of 3-0. and They're 6-0 and overall. Tied with them in first in the conference is the 10th-ranked Oregon Ducks, who are 3-0 and in conference play and 5-1 and overall. Third right now currently belongs to the 12th-ranked uh, USC Trojans, who are 4-1 and in conference play and 6-1 and overall. Fourth currently belongs to the 15th-ranked Utah Utes, who are 3-1 and in conference play and 5-2 and overall. Fifth currently belongs to the Oregon State Beavers, who are 2-2 two two in conference play and 5-2 and overall. Also in uh, fifth, technically also at this point in time, uh, tie for fifth, you can say, are the uh, team that your Golden Bears will be facing tomorrow night, that being the Washington Huskies. They're 2-2 two and two in conference play, and they also have an overall record of 5-2. and two. Seventh spot in the conference right now currently belongs to your California Golden Bears. They are 1-2. and two. Uh, Excuse me, no, never mind. The Buffalo are ahead of us now in seventh with a record of one and two and an overall record of five, uh, one and five uh, this season uh, with your Golden Bears technically tied uh, for the seventh spot. Also with a record of one and two in conference play, Cal's overall record this year is three and three. Arizona State is tied with Colorado and Cal right now for seventh with a record of one and two in conference play. They're two and four overall. Ninth place currently belonging to the Washington, or excuse me, 10th place belonging to the Washington State Cougars, who are 1 and 3 in conference play and 4 and 3 overall. 11th currently belonging to the Wildcats of Arizona, who are 1 and 3 in conference play and 3 and 4 overall this season. And the 12th and last place spot in the conference, I guess I can, you know, feel a little bit better as a Cal fan seeing this right now. 0-4 in conference play and 2-4 and overall in 2022, the last place spot belonging to the Stanford Cardinal. And uh, again, man, Cal football has got to wake the hell up. You know, this was a year that myself, uh, my good friend Taddy, and a lot of the other guys up on Tightwad Hill were looking at as being, you know, really a make-or-break year 
for Justin Wilcox as far as the coaching thing goes. And, you know, if it ends up going south, you know, you're going to, you know, you already got people calling for Justin's head at this point. I'm not really ready to do that yet, though, of course, as you heard me say already, I do feel that Bill Musgrave at least should be fired at this point. Uh, it's really going to take a lot more. For, to go down as far as this season goes, and maybe even into next season a little bit for me to finally be calling for Will Cox's head. But at the same time, remember, folks, Justin just signed an extension, and I'm pretty sure as badly as many of you all out there do want him to go, uh, is it really going to be worth having to pay off that buyout and then dealing with a coaching carousel where potentially you could have somebody that's even shittier maybe come in here and coach the team? Let's – Wait and see a little bit what happens. Now, if something drastic happily happens before the end of the year, it can change my mind on that. We'll wait and see. But at this point in time, the only member of the Cal coaching staff I'm call calling for to get fired at this point is Bill Musgrave. That's because I've always felt that uh, Bill Musgrave is a steaming hot pile of offensive coordinator shit who should have never been hired by Cal football to begin with. And that concludes this show's segment edition of the Bear Raid presented by Tightwad Hill. Of course, as mentioned, this uh, not only is a show segment that uh, the 99-year-old Pile of Dirt sponsors, they, of course, also sponsor a full-on podcast version of the Bear Raid presented by Tightwad Hill that comes at you uh, basically once every two weeks. And, of course, for more information on the podcast version of the Bear Raid presented by Tightwad Hill, be sure to check things out for that over on Facebook.com slash Tightwad Hill Official. Follow things over on Twitter at Tightwad Hill 23. Uh, for additional info on the Bear Raid, you can check out things at uh, the site that or page that is serving as kind of a temporary home uh, for the Bear Raid online until the Tightwad Hill website gets launched again. And, of course, being AceFanRadio.com slash the Bear Raid presented by Tightwad Hill. Live broadcasts of the Bear Raid, just like with live versions of A's Fan Radio, are shown right here on twitch.tv slash A's Fan Radio. And, of course, just like with uh, past editions of the Bear Raid, uh, excuse me, just like with past editions of this show, you can also catch uh, past editions of the Bear Raid over on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash C slash A's Fan Radio. And, uh, well, my bad. Next edition, by the way, of the Bear Raid, for those of you that are wondering, uh, will be coming coming at you on Sunday, October the 30th. That's when uh, show number 25 of the Bear Raid is slated to go down. Uh, we'll go down at either 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time if uh, more than just myself uh, end up hosting that show. But if that ends up being uh, yet another Bear Raid where it's just me hosting things solo, I, of course, then will start that broadcast at 8 p.m. So, again, show number 24 of the Bear Raid presented by Tightwad Hill coming at you on Sunday, October the 30th at either 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Fan question reminder yet again for those of you that haven't had a chance to uh, throw your response into the fire yet. Uh, this is your reminder to go and do so if you haven't yet. Of course, uh, either Facebook.com slash A's Fan Radio or at A's underscore Fan underscore Radio over on Twitter is where you can find the uh, post in regards to the fan question of the night. Just follow the directions of the post or tweet says, submit your responses, and I, of course, will read off your responses when uh, everything is all said and done in regards to that with the uh, the fan question of the night. Fan question of the night, of course, uh, for this edition of A's Fan Radio is, we want to find out from y'all who you think will be battling off in the World Series this year in 2022. Again, fan question of the night, we want to hear your predictions for who's going to face off in this year's World Series. We come back at you. It will be time for Oakland Roots Talk here on show number 323, the playoff editions of A's Fan Radio.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue on down the road here in the infamous X-rated second half of show number 323, the playoff editions of your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland Athletics. A's talk from the fans' point of view since 2003, and even though, of course, our beloved Green and Gold are not in the postseason this year, hey, we're still doing postseason shows because why the hell not? We can. That's one advantage of being an independently fan-produced podcast. You can do shows whenever the bloody hell and whatever the hell you you want welcome back again to uh, show number 323 of age fan radio coming at you of course from dub six studios located in the east mont hills of oakland california where it has of course been the uh, legally 5150 corporal oaktown coming at you uh, solo for basically the entire duration of tonight's broadcast as the uh, boss man of course having the night off with his stepson having a high school football game going down looking forward of course to having boss man on the broadcast for uh, next week's edition of the show and uh, definitely looking forward again as we mentioned earlier to uh, having you all catch that interview that uh, myself and boss recorded earlier today with uh, Kevin Jenkins who of course is running for the uh, district six seat on the Oakland City Council in an election that along with uh, three city council seats you also got the uh, seat for the mayor of Oakland up for grabs in a couple of weeks and going to be real interesting to see how things play out with that, uh, especially in regards to stuff with Howard Terminal, uh, as, of course, uh, the way things are looking right now. Uh, both sides still talking, apparently. Uh, I guess you can count this as your unofficial Howard Terminal update for this edition of the show. Both sides still talking, but still no deal in place yet, and the suspicions are that looks like things will be carrying over into 2023 where you will have a new mayor and uh, potentially three new city council members that uh, will be looking into that. And uh, in case you all are wondering, uh, we did ask uh, Kevin for his take on uh, that entire matter, and you'll have to uh, wait, of course, to hear his response and his thoughts on that, um, as well as some of the other stuff that we uh, discussed with him when we interviewed him earlier today. So again, definitely be sure to uh, tune in to next week's edition of the show, not just for obviously playoff recap and talk, and uh, what of course is going down with the other local sports teams here that you might be following at this point in time that we follow in the show with the exception of the San Francisco Warriors don't care about them anymore because they left and those of you of course that want to have Stockholm Syndrome from the Traders go find another fan produced podcast to listen to talk about that because we don't mess with the with the faders or uh the San Francisco horribles or well they're not horrible right now but just you, you know how it is boss and I don't mess with SF teams and either have to deal with it and move on or if you don't want to accept it oh well your problem Anyway, let's go ahead and continue on with things here in the second half of tonight's show as it's time now for the uh, latest edition of the uh, Oakland Roots segment here on A's Fan Radio. One game, of course, to uh, recap on this uh, edition of the Roots segment and one game to preview uh, that goes down before we come at you again next week. As, of course, uh, before we came at you the last time here on the show, the Roots had one regular season game left to go that ultimately would decide their fate on if they would make it into the USL postseason uh, for the second year in a row. This, of course, also being the second year that the Roots have been in USL championship after, of course, they initially started their early uh, couple of years of existence as a franchise over in the NISA League. That final game of the year for Oakland Roots SC would be a road game in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as they, of course, would face off with Pittsburgh Riverhounds SC over there in Pittsburgh. Uh, f- great back and forth battle. The Roots uh, did end up getting on the board in this one, uh, but of course they only got one goal. Pittsburgh ended up getting three over the course of the two halves of this one. So uh, again, it was a contest where really all you had to do if you were the Roots, win the game, don't have to worry about any of those you know scenarios that you have to sit back and wait for. All the Roots had to do was win this contest, and they would go in to the postseason without any problems. That ended up not being the case, as when full time uh, came to an end in this contest, which went down last Saturday, October the 15th, the F- uh, Pittsburgh Riverhounds handing your Oakland Roots a 3-1 loss, which means, of course, that the Roots would have to be sit around and wait for the outcome of a matchup going on between the Las Vegas Lights and, of course, LA Galaxy 2. Basically, in that situation, in order for the Roots to advance to the postseason, uh, either LA Galaxy 2 had to win the game or force a draw with the Las Vegas Lights. And obviously, if the Las Vegas Lights won, they would have had, would have be the ones going to the postseason, and the Roots would have been the ones on the outside looking in. 
luckily for us, LA Galaxy 2 got the job done. You know, I can't even think about that because I remember seeing a few of uh, my buddies out there that follow the roots like, man, we really have to rely on LA Galaxy 2 to help us out. What circle of hell have we descended into at this point? But LA Galaxy 2 holding the Las Vegas Lights to a 1-1 draw in their contest that went down later that night on October the 15th. And with that draw going down, that means for the second year in a row and for their second year in the USL Championship, your Oakland Roots clinching a playoff spot as they clinch the seventh and final spot in the Western Conference to head on in to the 2022 USL postseason. So congratulations to everyone at Oakland Roots SC and uh, a season that pretty much, you know, began all hectic and crazy as the squad began as what some jokingly referred to as the tying team because of the fact they ended up with so many ties early on in the in the season this year. And then eventually at one point you saw our head coach who had signed a multi-year deal to be the head coach of the Oakland Roots. Then apparently under everyone's, you know, eyesight and behind everyone's back, work out things to go back and be the head coach for his former team and uh, basically going over to Phoenix and screwing up everything. Ha ha, Juan Guerrero took the bad karma over there with you. Oakland Roots, by the way, winning five of their last six contests to be able to uh, get their way into the postseason. Again, would have been a little bit nicer to have won a game, so that way you could have just got in there by default. But nonetheless, hey, happy for the Roots and glad to see them heading in to the USL playoffs for the second year in a row. Here are what the uh, final Western Conference standings look like uh, for the uh, Western Conference of USL Championship with, of course, the playoffs uh, getting ready to begin tomorrow for the USL. Here's how things uh, ended up uh, falling out as far as the final standings in the Western Conference. San Antonio FC finished in the first spot, and they, of course, will have the bye week uh, for the Western Conference side of the playoff bracket. Uh, San Antonio finishing with a record of 24-5-5 and for a total of 77 points. Second place uh, going to the San Diego Loyal, who finished with a record of 18-10-6 and for 60 points. Colorado Springs Switchback finished in third with a record of 17-13-4 and for 55 points. Sacramento Republic FC finishing in fourth with a record of 15 11 and 8 for 53 points uh the fifth spot going to new mexico united who finished off with a record of 13 9 and 12 for 51 points rio grand valley fc finished in the sixth spot with a record of 14 13 and 7 for a total of 49 points and of course the seventh and final playoff spot in the conference going to your oakland roots sc who finished off the year with a record of 11 10 and 13 for a full total of 46 points. The teams that ended up on the outside looking in and that were eliminated from postseason play, of course, in the Western Conference were El Paso, El Paso Locomotive FC. They finished in eighth with a record of 13, 14, and 7 for a total of 46 points. Las Vegas Lights FC finished ninth with a record of 12, 13, and 9 for 45 points. Phoenix Rising FC finished 10th with a record of 12, 16, and 6 for a total of 42 points. LA Galaxy 2 finished in 11th with a record of 11, 16, and 7 for 40 points. Monterey Bay FC, who of course was an expansion team in the conference and uh, a couple weeks ago actually looked like they were going to force their way potentially into the postseason this year, kind of fizzling out uh, as they ended up with a draw and four losses to finish out their final games of the season. They finished 12th with a record of 12, 18, and 4 for 40 points. And the 13th and last place spot in the Western Conference conference going to Orange County FC who were eliminated weeks ago from postseason play. Uh, Orange County finishing off the season with a record of 7, 14, and 13 for a total of 34 points. And there's what the playoff bracket looks like uh, as far as things go for the USL playoffs. Uh, game action, of course, uh, beginning in both the Western and Eastern Conference side of things tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, of course, as mentioned over on the Western Conference uh, side of things, San Antonio having the bye week as they were the top seeded, uh, seeded team in the conference. The one game, of course, you want to obviously be paying attention to is that game that's all the way up in the top farthest uh, left corner of 
of uh, y'all's screens as you're looking at this. And that is, of course, the matchup that will be going down between your Oakland Roots SC and the San Diego Loyal SC as their conference quarterfinal matchup will take place this Sunday, October the 23rd, with the Roots, of course, heading on the road down to San Diego to take on San Diego Loyal. And that one, again, that conference quarterfinal match taking place on Sunday, October the 23rd, with that game beginning at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You, of course, can catch those uh, that game on either ESPN Plus or on KTVU Plus. And uh, for those of you that aren't making the trip down to San Diego, we, of course, actually know uh, several uh, of our buddies out there that uh, support the Roots, and obviously some members of the Oakland 68s are also making their way down to San Diego for that contest on Sunday. For those of you that won't be heading down to San Diego, feel free to come and join me and the misses. Yeah, I actually finally, unlike last week when I wanted to go to the watch party last week for the game against Pittsburgh, ended up not going because things came up and wifey didn't want to go. Me and Christy will be at the watch party that will be going on for this matchup between Oakland and San Diego at the Athletic Club. And, of course, also will be... Uh, again, same time as the game that, uh, you know, game start, schedules to start at 7. Probably see myself and the wifey over there probably sometime between about 5.30 and 6 for those of you that are going over there. So, again, safe travels for those of you that are heading down to San Diego to watch this battle between the Oakland Roots and San Diego Loyal. And, again, for those of you that are not making the trip, come and chill with me and the wifey over at the Athletic Club in downtown Oakland. And, uh, hey, just very happy of course, to uh, yet again see this young up-and-coming uh, uh, soccer club continue to uh, unleash its uh, magic as a force of good and uh, continuing to draw support uh, to the brand, making the playoffs for the uh, the second year in a row. Of course, their second year overall uh, over in the USL and just would be very nice to obviously see them go on a, a run and, hey, be Dope to bring another sports championship to the city. Obviously facing some pretty long odds in this one, but hey, you know we all know it is. We like an underdog story in sports. We even like the underdog story even more when it's an Oakland team that's doing it in sports. That, of course, concludes this show's edition of the Oakland Roots segment. Uh, we'll definitely be looking forward to seeing how things, of course, play out uh, in regards to that and uh, hopefully be recapping a victory uh, for your Oakland Roots when we come at you here uh, for next week's edition of the show. On that note, reminder that this is the final fan question of the night coming at you here uh, for this edition of the show, though, of course, knowing me, I'll probably say something to remind you all again uh, before the uh, final segment begins, but this is technically the official final reminder uh, for things here on uh, the show. So if you haven't had a chance to do so yet, be sure to make your way over to either facebook.com slash A's fan radio or at A's underscore fan underscore radio over on Twitter and look for the poster tweet that has fan questions the night in it follow the directions submit your responses i of course read off your responses during the upcoming final segment of the show we want to hear from y'all who you think will be going to the 2022 mlb world series and of course i will read off those responses to the fan question after we touch bases on the latest with the san jose sharks and what they have on tap between now and next week's edition of the show we come back at you here in a bit from the final break of the night going into the final segment of the night here on show number 323 of your number one source for everything and anything on your oakland athletics a's fan radio All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and get this final segment of tonight's show underway and at you. And, of course, hey, given the fact that this is the final segment of this night, you have until I get done talking at Bay Area hockey action uh, to get your responses to the fan question of the night. And, hey, I told you we kind of have an unofficial final, final reminder. That was it right there. So, yeah, get those responses in if you haven't had a chance to do so. Welcome back. It is show number 323, the playoff editions 
of your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland Athletics A's fan radio. With, of course, Legally 5150 Corporal Oaktown coming at you solo for the entire duration of tonight's show. Main man, the boss man, had the night off with his uh, stepson having high school football action going down. Let's go ahead and begin things here on this final segment of tonight's show uh, with the latest on the local Bay Area hockey team and uh, what they have on tap between now and the next time we come at you here on AFRs. Let we get another, uh, uh, I guess, exciting. Well, I shouldn't say exciting because up to this point in time, they haven't been <laughs> exciting yet. It's kind of been the same old, same old from the last year or so. Anywho, time yet again for a San Jose Sharks segment here on A's Fan Radio. Uh, before I get in, of course, to recapping and looking back at the uh, games that they have played since the last time we came at you and what they have on tap between now and next week, uh, pretty sure that some of you all out there have seen that the uh, the San Jose Sharks and other teams in the NHL putting out these kind of uh, reverse retro throwback jerseys that are based on uh, either colors and schemes that the teams had in the past or even based on colors and schemes from teams that don't exist anymore or relocated. Uh, For those of you that haven't been able to tell, obviously a lot of you out there will know this. The design that the Sharks are using, of course, draws inspiration from uh, uh, sweaters or uniform tops that were used by the Oakland slash California Golden Seals, who were an NHL team that used to be in Oakland during the late 60s, early 70s, that ultimately relocated and technically has its histories tied now to the uh, halfway tied, I guess, to the Dallas Stars and somewhat to the San Jose Sharks in some way, though in recent years it's been the Dallas Stars that have held the rights to any of the Seal stuff. Um, I I, kind of have mixed emotions right now on how that jersey looks. I mean, I like the fact that they, you know, worked in things so it kind of looked reminiscent of how those seal jerseys look. You know, but part of me kind of wishes that they would have just went with a straight-up, you know, throwback actual seals jersey. But, you know, hey, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's one of those situations where as time grows on, maybe that design grows on me. But I'm kind of on the fence right now with that whole retro jersey design. But, hey, we'll have to wait and see. You know, maybe that's because I feel, you know, so, you know, hard of the fact that, you know, and I wasn't the only one. A whole bunch of us Sharks fans out there were actually hoping that the throwback jersey, the retro jersey, was actually going to be a a Seals jersey instead of what basically looks like a Seal theme, Seals theme jersey, but with Shark stuff on it. You know, it is what it is. Again, maybe it's something that as time goes on and I see more of it, maybe I'll change my thought. But, yeah, if you want the Corporal's initial thoughts on that jersey, I am you know haven't really made up my mind yet if I like it or hate it. I'm kind of on the fence with it at this point in time. As time goes on, I'll let you know if anything changes with that one way or another. On that note now, let's go ahead and get into uh, most recent game action and what's on tap next uh, for the Sharks between now and next week. Starting, of course, with uh, games that went down. They had four games go down between uh, the last time we came at you and, of course, now. Uh, First of those games, of course, being a game that went down uh, last Friday at the Shark Tank down there in San Jose on Friday the 14th as the uh, Carolina Hurricane came into town for the uh, Sharks home opener here in the States. If you remember, of course, they had a home game take place on the road uh, a couple weekends ago when they played that global series against the uh, Predators over in Prague. Uh, first actual home game at home for in uh, San Jose for your San Jose Sharks. Uh, when the game was all said and done, it unfortunately would be yet another loss earlier in the year for Team Teals. They would fall to the Hurricanes in that game by the final of 2-1. to one. Uh, Unfortunately, it would kind of be more of the same the next night as the Sharks would end up playing back-to-back home games uh, to open up things last weekend as the uh, Chicago Blackhawks came into town for a second consecutive game at the tank for Team Till. That game, of course, being on Saturday, October the 15th. Uh, the Sharks actually jumped out to an early 2 nothing lead uh, in this contest, basically to ultimately see that that two nothing lead evaporate uh, and basically gave up five unanswered goals to the Blackhawks in this one as the uh, Blackhawks would ultimately win this game uh, by the final of five to two and uh, just continue the Sharks on an early dismal season as the Sharks of course begin the year on an 0 and four run and uh, 
after their next game after that, it would end up being an 0 and 5 run uh, to begin the year as they would of course head out on the road uh, last Tuesday or this past Tuesday October the 18th uh, the first of two games actually through uh, the New York New Jersey the first of three games I should say through the New York New Jersey area uh, first of those three games in that region of course going down on Tuesday the 18th as the uh, Sharks faced off against the uh, New York Islanders over there in New York and uh don't know if it was a summer situation, but when this game was over with, it would be the same final as the game that went down at home a few nights prior as the Sharks lose this game as well by the final of 5-2 to two and fall to an 0-5 start to the season before they would finally get on the winning side of things in a game that went down at Madison Square Garden last night uh, over there in New York as the Sharks headed in to the Garden uh, to square off with the New York Rangers. A game that actually took overtime to ultimately decide a victor. And, uh, hey, Team Teal finally getting their first win of 2022 in this one as they uh, defeated the New York Rangers in overtime by the final of 3-2. to two. Upcoming games between now and next week for your San Jose Sharks. They, of course, were off today. Uh, they continue their road trip that they are on in the moment uh, tomorrow with a game that will be played in uh, New Jersey as they will have a road matchup against the New Jersey Devils. That game will start at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, our time. So bright and early ho- uh, hockey action for us Sharks fans out here in the West Coast that might be planning on catching that. Uh, they will play another road game on back-to-back days they will close out that four game road trip that they were on uh, with the second consecutive night game on this weekend uh, over in Philadelphia as they will be in Philly to play against the Flyers that contest will start at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time after that they will have an off day on Monday the 24th and then come back home for uh, three road games to close out the month Uh, two of those three road games taking place between now and the next time we come at you Uh, the first of those games of course a home game against the hated Vegas Golden Knights taking place at the San Jose Arena on Tuesday October the 25th that contest begins at the tank at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and the uh, next um, game of course after that that will go down on the same night that we will be coming at you with the next edition of A's Fan Radio that will be at the tank as well as the San Jose Sharks will be hosting the Toronto Maple Leafs on Thursday October the 27th that will also be a 7 30 p.m. puck drop from the San Jose Arena let's go ahead and uh, Take a look at what the current uh, Pacific Division standings look like right now over in the National Hockey League. The Pacific Division, of course, being the division that your San Jose Sharks call home. Uh, Just waiting on NHL.com to load that up and got that all at you right now. First place currently belonging to the Vegas Golden Knights as they are on top of the division right now with a record of 4-1-0 for a total of eight points. The Calgary Flames and the Seattle Kraken and the Los Angeles Kings are all tied. Hyde technically for the second place spot right now. Calgary has a record of three and one. Seattle a record of two and two. And Los Angeles a record of three and three for a total of six points for all three of those teams. Fifth place currently belongs to the Edmonton Oilers, who have a record of two, two and oh for four points. Six belongs to the Anaheim Ducks, who are one, three and one for three points. The Vancouver Canucks are in seventh with a record of oh, three and two for a total of two points. And the eighth and final spot in the Pacific division is where unfortunately for right now you can find our beloved team teal as the san jose sharks sit at the bottom of the division with a record of one five and two for a total of two points and uh yep sadly right now so far it looks like uh team might be off to another dismal start and you know maybe potentially and unfortunately another dismal season on the way for those of us who follow hockey here in the Bay Area. Hope it's not the case. Would be really nice to see this hockey team that those of us here in the Bay Area follow uh, turn things around and actually get back into the uh, the winning ways of things. Is that going to happen? Don't know. We're going to have to obviously uh, wait and see how things uh, play out over the course of 2022-2023 uh, over in the NHL for your San Jose Sharks. And that, of course, wraps up this show's edition of the San Jose Sharks segment, which, of course, means if you haven't had a chance to get them in yet, 
Your time is up. It is now time to read off any and all responses that have been put out there, of course, for tonight's fan question of the night. As always, regardless uh, whatever we're doing, however long they are, and uh, pretty much whenever we're doing a show, or at least as far as things go with A's Fan Radio, we always uh, make sure as best as possible to have a fan question of the night sitting out there for you all to chime into because of the fact that until we figure out a way to get some sort of call-in capability maybe set up on this show at some point in the future, uh, doing the fan question of the night is the best way uh, to get in responses and actually hear those responses read out over the airwaves on the show. So uh, you didn't get a chance to respond to the one that was up there for tonight. Don't sweat it. Don't worry about it. Try to make sure, though, you chime in for the one on next week's show. And, of course, uh, any fan question of the night that we put out there for any future edition of A's Fan Radio. Of course, uh, getting, of course, to the responses that are out there on Facebook and Twitter to this one. I'll go and touch bases first uh, for the responses over on the Twitter side of things. Fan question of the night, of course, again, for tonight's edition of A's Fan Radio was, we wanted to hear from you who are your picks to move on to the 2022 MLB World Series. Starting off, of course, with our first response coming from Dick the Diabetic at Richard T1D over on Twitter. His pick being the Astros and the Phillies to play in the Fall Classic. He also added on that he had that he has the Astros winning in six as much as it pains him to say that. Uh, the other response coming from uh, Danny E over there on Twitter as well as he chimes in with basically wanting to see a rematch of the 1998 World Series. He wants to see the Padres and the Yankees uh, throw down. He didn't give a pick out there for as far as what he wants to see as the outcome. Uh, no responses, it looks like, uh, for the fan question tonight over on the Facebook side of things. So, uh, hey, two responses are better than none. I do at least appreciate that we got a couple of responses out there uh, for that one. Uh, and in case if y'all are wondering uh, – Again, not to upset my A's buddies out there that are rooting uh, for the Philadelphia Phillies or for y'all on here that are those couple few Astro fans that do follow this A's podcast because either you know myself or Boss Man or just for some random ass reason you want to listen to this show anyway. Uh, um, again, I kind of want to see a rematch of the 1998 World Series as well. But uh, unless the Yankees wake up here soon, that may not end up happening. And uh, depending on how Philly comes out of the gates after what they did tonight you know you never know we could end up with a philly houston world series going down potentially but uh yeah yours truly would kind of like to see it be a rematch of the 98 world series with the only difference of course uh, and luckily my yankee roommate's not anywhere near the room right now if it's a rematch of 98 i actually would like to see the padres win it this time uh but we'll have to ultimately see again if the yankees aren't able to wake up it could end up being Houston and San Diego or Houston and Philly. We'll have to ultimately see. But, yeah, thanks again to those of you that uh, chimed in with your responses to uh, the fan question of the night for this edition of the show. And, again, if you didn't get a chance to, just keep your eyes open uh, for next week's fan question of the night. And I'm pretty sure most of you already know what that will be tied to, given what we'll be previewing next week. But I'll wait, of course, on putting it out there when we get to that point uh, for next week's edition of the show. As always, for the latest information pertaining to your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland Athletics, be sure to check us out at A'sFanRadio.com. Like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash A'sFanRadio. Follow us on Twitter at A's underscore fan underscore radio. You, of course, can check out past editions of our show broadcast, past editions of the Bear Raid, and a whole lot more over on our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash C slash A'sFanRadio. And, of course, unless it's otherwise noted, all live editions editions of AFR take place right here on our Twitch channel. And that, of course, is where you can catch the next playoff edition of A's Fan Radio when, of course, show number 324, the playoff editions, goes down next Thursday night, October the 27th at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here on twitch.tv slash A's Fan Radio. And, hey, that means it's uh, time for final thoughts of the night, the only final thought of the night here, you know, obviously when – both Boss and I are here lately. Obviously, he does his final thought in the first half of the show. I do mine in the second half of the show. Obviously, only one of us here, so only one final thought of the night. Uh, as always, thank you all for tuning in. Always appreciate it when you come and check us out, regardless if you uh, happen to catch us when we do the shows live or if you come back and watch the, uh, the recordings of uh, this bad boy and the other broadcasts we do on either our Twitch page or our YouTube page. Uh, nothing else, really, other than for the fact I want 
want to reiterate to uh, anyone from uh, UC Berkeley and Cal Athletics that is uh, happening to tune into this broadcast, for the love of God, please fire Bill Musgrave. He fucking sucks. Never should have been hired as offensive coordinator for Cal. Get that boo out of there. Hashtag fire Bill Musgrave. That's basically my final thought for the night here on the show. As always, on behalf of the rest of the cast here on A's Fan Radio, I am the Legally 5150 Corporal Oaktown. Y'all take care and enjoy the rest of your Friday night. The views and opinions of our cast, our guests, and our listeners are in no way, shape, or form affiliated with the Oakland Athletics or Major League Baseball. Good night, Walter Haas. Good night, King Al. Screw your Mark-ass bull-cut son who stole our beloved football team and moved into a desert and turned into a fraudulent operation. Get karma on his ass already. Good night, Chesty Puller, wherever you may be, looking over the souls of the Marines, past, present, and dumb enough to serve in Uncle Sam's misguided children in the future. Good night, Auntie Di-Di. Love you and miss you. And good night and love you and miss you as well. Godfather Grizz looking down on us all from the Coliseum in the sky. Hey, don't drink and drive. Wrap it before you tap it. Same old BS I got told before every single safety brief back when I was in the good old United States Marine Corps. Because we want to see you right back here on our next edition of the show. Same bat time, same Twitch channel when show number 324, the playoff editions, goes down here on AFR next Thursday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until next Thursday night, good night, Oakland and beyond. And as always, be sure to... To stay Oakland, my friends.